Hello. Now, when you've got £27,000 to spend on a motor car, you're really spoiled for choice. I mean, you've only got to think of Mercedes, Jaguar, BMW, Rover, all very good cars. And now the Japanese are getting in on the act. I saw a Lexus in Harley Street the other day, and I have to admit, it looked a very nice car. But then, so it should, for over £36,000. So, when I was asked to test drive a Vauxhall Senator, I was rather intrigued. I'd never really considered a Vauxhall before, but a very sweet girl from the local dealer explained that it was the flagship of the entire Vauxhall range, and that I could borrow it for the whole weekend. Well, put that way, <laughs> how could I refuse? To do the job thoroughly, I borrowed some of the key competitors from my friends. The BMW 525SE, the Rover 24-valve Sterling, and the Ford Scorpio 2.9. Ah, yes, this is what it's all about. The smell of leather, the gleam of fine walnut finish, the detail of craftsmanship, and the sweet note of superb engineering. It looks and feels every inch a prestigious car. I'm surrounded by luxury and technology, power-assisted steering, ABS, automatic transmission, cruise control, limited slip differential, variable suspension, air conditioning, electric sunroof, compact disc. Gosh, it's got the lot. But the nice thing is, the technology doesn't overwhelm you. As soon as I sat in the Senator, I felt in control. It was very easy to drive, very responsive, powerful, and safe. First impressions, very good. But it's a big decision to change one's car. So I thought I'd compare the Senator closely with the competition. To begin with, styling is very important to a customer like me. We professionals must project the right image. And I have to say that the lines of the Senator are elegant and refined. By comparison, the BMW looks a little aggressive even flashy. The Ford, well, it's very attractive and more on the lines of the Senator. As for the Rover, well, it's been around for quite a while. A little dated, perhaps? But of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Personally, I think the Senator and the Scorpio have the most sophisticated lines. But I'm sure I've seen the Scorpio as a taxi. Yes, I have. Not so very exclusive, after all. And there are so many Mercedes and BMWs at the golf club, I think I might turn a few heads if I drove up in this. Under here is something which is very impressive. A six-cylinder engine with Bosch electronic engine management system and two catalytic converters as standard. This little beauty delivers 0 to 62 in 8.8 .8 seconds and a top speed of 146 miles per hour. <laughs> I'm not terribly sure when I drive like that, but it's nice to know you've got the power. And how did it measure up against the competition? The Senator has the highest top speed of them all and the best acceleration. Wouldn't that surprise my chum with the BMW? Of course, I could quote bits from the brochure about dual ram intake and twin nozzle fuel injectors, but all that is double dutch to me. As a mere customer, all I want to know is does it deliver power when I need it? And, of course, uh, does it work in perfect harmony with the automatic transmission for a smooth, quiet ride? According to the experts, the answer is a definite yes. Excellent road behaviour, impressive comfort, excellent response and performance. But the 12-valve Scorpio? Feels leisurely, its snarly engine lacking in top-end brio, but hauling hard in the low and mid-speed ranges. And the Rover? We expected the Rover Sterling to do better. Dynamically, it's unexceptional. And although the BMW lives up to its image on performance, it is not perfect. Steering stodginess, a smooth but wailing engine. 
Unlike most rivals, the automatic box has no performance override other than manual selection. By comparison, the Senator's transmission is rated highly. The three-mode Vauxhall box, which will start in third to avert wheel spin on ice, is particularly versatile. And generally? Able Senator has viceless, entertaining chassis. Smooth three-liter inline six makes it one of the fastest. Brakes well weighted, very reassuring. So, in comparative tests, the Senator has attracted praise and admiration from the motoring press. Now, what about the boot? How does it compare? This is how it should be. A good, clear space with easy access. The wheel arches are unobtrusive, and there are four retention eyes for fixing down those fragile objects. And the rear seats fold down. So useful for longer loads. How do the others compare? The Rover is definitely more difficult to load. Higher boot sill, narrower access, smaller boot, speakers dipping into the load space, and no split or folding seats. Scorpio is a big improvement. And the BMW, 10% smaller than the Senator and no retention eyes for fixing down that wonderful bargain you picked up at Sotheby's. Well, as long as you don't take the corners too fast, no problems there. Now this is very sensible. Unlike some manufacturers, Vauxhall clearly regards security as a necessity rather than a luxury. Even with the window open, the door remains locked. The Senator, like the BMW, has a deadlock, which literally bolts the doors and the boot, which is very nice to know if you just put valuables into the boot. Even so, it took just 30 seconds for Motoring Witch to open the locks on a BMW 5 Series. They couldn't get into the Vauxhall at all. And they couldn't even console themselves with the hubcaps. They're lockable too. The alarm, of course, is standard. On the BMW, it would cost an extra 447 pounds. And there's so much equipment and comfort inside the car that I hardly know where to begin. Let's have a quick rundown. Nice wide access, plenty of leg and headroom, a wheel that tilts, and beautifully comfortable seats that are very easy to adjust. Unlike the BMW, leather seats are standard, as is the fully adjustable lumbar support, very important for the back and a feature that everyone loves on a cold and frosty morning, the front seats are heated too. Back seat passengers are also in the lap of luxury. Like the front, the rear seat belts are height adjustable so one's larger friends won't arrive at the party feeling strangled. And they get one-touch electric windows, their own heating and ventilation nozzles, and their own reading lamps, so they can join in the fun of map reading too. In general, rear seat passengers in the other cars are not so comfortably off. The BMW is renowned for its lack of leg space, and for the executive who occasionally needs a chauffeur, I think that's rather a poor show, don't you? What else? Oh, yes. I rather like this. Very sensible. After all, one doesn't want to trap the traffic warden's hand in the window, no matter how rude he might be. Um, the, the glass electric sunroof, that's rather nice. <laughs> I prefer it tilted. Then it doesn't, um, ruffle my hair. <clears throat> oh, ah, and then there's the stereo.
A confident, supple ride. Accelerates well, even at lower speeds. Extremely powerful engine, but matched by a state-of-the-art suspension system. Result? Superb stability and balance, even when you brake. And ABS for added peace of mind. Depending on the roads and on your mood, electronic ride control gives you a choice of suspension rates, from medium to comfort for a softer ride, to sport, which gives the car a quicker response and firmer ride. And this is state-of-the-art too. For safety reasons, it will not maintain the comfort setting over 71 miles per hour. Surprisingly enough, electronic ride control is not standard on the Sterling, the Scorpio, or the BMW. But then there are so many features as standard on the Senator, it'd be easier to tell you what it hasn't got. Um, yes, well, I'll have to think about that. Oh, one thing it hasn't got is a pressing need to visit the workshop. And that says a lot for the thought that has gone into this vehicle. Luxury, technology, comfort, safety, and common sense. Everything you'd expect in a prestige car and more. And even if you could specify all these features in the other models, you might not like the price tag. The list price for the Senator CD is £28,070. With similar features, the 24-valve Scorpio would be about the same. The Sterling is around 28,600, and the BMW tops the lot at well over 32,000 pounds. Whichever way you look at it, the Senator is superb value for money. And these days, that's what everybody wants. For the final verdict, let's hear from the press, the Sterling. It just isn't special enough even allowing for all that opulence and equipment. The trouble is, is that for £10,000 less, you can get an 820i that looks just the same. The Scorpio. The Ford, frankly, doesn't make the grade. It's loaded with equipment, but that can't compensate for a car that lacks refinement. The BMW. Lost outright performance. Needs more rear space. And the Senator. On performance alone, it's very tempting. But in addition, it's refined, comfortable, and very good to drive. Hmm. Mm hmm. I could get quite carried away with the Senator. You don't want it back just yet, do you? <laughs> <laughs>